Thank you for your interest in learning how our suite of products can help improve cybersecurity, safety, and compliance in your district's online learning and working environment. Managed Methods is the only company providing cybersecurity and safety for Google Workspace, Microsoft 365, and online browsing specifically for K-12 schools. Our three products, Cloud Monitor, Content Filter, and Classroom Manager, make cybersecurity and safety easy and affordable. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to give you an idea of how you can gain visibility and control you need to monitor, alert, respond to different cyber incidents when time is of the essence. No proxy, no agent, and no special training is needed. Starting with our flagship product, Cloud Monitor. There are three features that I'm going to be taking a look at today with you. The first is going to be the risk section of the platform, which is going to go out and look for potential areas of concern, whether those be social security numbers, credit card numbers, uh, indications of self-harm, or other custom risks, which might be going out and looking for areas of potential concern there. Uh, the second will be looking at login activity and potential uh, users log in from outside the United States. And then the last one will be looking into some information on file and email activity. Hopping over to the Risks tab, the Risks tab will provide visibility into drive files, Gmail, and shared drive files, and specifically going to help pull out information that might be cause of concern. Again, that information can vary on what it might be, so it can really range from anything from looking for social security numbers to credit card numbers uh, to something else that might be cause for concern there. Uh, with any of these, you've got an ability to drill into the actual incident itself. There'll be information provided, so if I go ahead and click into this one here as an example, there's going to be some information provided about what was flagged by the platform here. I've got ways to take a look at that and, and do a further review as necessary. There's some different actions I'm able to take on that risk right from here as well. I could even take potential notes on this risk if it was some kind of incident that required further follow-up or things of that nature. Uh, these risks are very customizable and they allow you to have the platform do some of the heavy lifting and quickly find some things for you without having to do a lot of configuration and things like that. So we've got a number of out-of-the-box risk scans and then that can be expanded upon depending on depending on preference there. So lots of different kinds of things, anything from looking for, again, more of the student safety or the data loss prevention side of things, but even things that may not be more typical risk scans, such as looking for uh, students potentially using proxy files or mentioning proxies or talking about ways to play games or get around content filtering or things of that nature there. Coupled with the risks tab will be a very powerful policy section which will allow you to have the platform take automatic action in, in many instances. So if somebody shares a file to the outside that they shouldn't have, you'll be able to have the platform automatically break those share permissions or delete an email coming into the domain with a specific subject line. So there's a lot of flexibility that you can use coupled with those risk scans to have the platform take some direct action for you. So that will be one of the core, core components of the platform, one of the major areas there. Next will be accounts here and taking a look specifically at login activity. One of the big issues that we see in both Google uh, and in, in Microsoft as well too is issues with users logging in from places they shouldn't be, especially logins from outside the United States. So here over in the Google environment, I'm going to go ahead and apply a quick filter here for unapproved. So the platform has a default geofence where everything outside the United States is considered unapproved. There are specific policies again to provide alert notifications. Login activity is going to be looked at every four hours so the platform can then also suspend accounts or reset passwords passwords as well too. With any of these events, you're able to quickly take a look at them. You'll get some basic information. So is it a successful login? How do they get into the environment here? So in this case, they're using their Google password to access the account. Uh, we can even go ahead and run those IP addresses against a database to go ahead and see if they're part of any VPNs or proxies as well too. So with this, this can be really helpful to help identify potential compromised accounts, students using VPNs, or sometimes it'll be a situation where someone's just thankfully traveling. But especially the compromised accounts where we see a lot of potential issues coming up, especially when we take a look at something on the Google side like a suspicious unapproved login. So this would be a login event that Google classified as suspicious, but it still let the person access their account. Account. These are where we do see, unfortunately, some of those compromised accounts and where there can be a problem. Again, even a student account, if it's compromised, can potentially give a bad actor quite a bit of access to things, especially if your students have ability to email at all. Those could be used then to target your own users within the domain for emails, or it could be then used to just spam the world potentially as well too. So definitely something you want to keep a very close eye on are those accounts that are logging in from outside the United States, and then make sure that is that something where someone's using a VPN or is that a possible compromised account? And if it's a compromised account, Coming back over to accounts here, we've got abilities to quickly suspend accounts or reset passwords. You can even further dig into those accounts directly by running report against the How They've Been Pwned database to see if the user was part of any known data breaches. You can also go ahead and suspend, unsuspend, or change user's password from here as well too. 
Again, a lot of that can be automated as well too, where you have the platform automatically change a password or reset a password or suspend the account, just depending on preference. There can be some limitations to that. I and mean, again, that data does come in every four hours, but this can be really valuable to give you a good sense of what's going on with, within the environment, where people log in from, is there a potential problem we weren't aware of before? The other two major areas of the Cloud Monitor product are going to be the Drive Files and the Gmail tab. Specifically in here, there's going to be something called the Live File Search. There's a lot of great information on the Drive Files tab to start with, but this is a very powerful search tool which allows you to do a live API call throughout the entire domain to look for whatever specific files you're trying to locate. So we could go ahead and actually drop that modify date. As long as the files exist in the domain, and the account's not been suspended or the files haven't been completely deleted, this should be able to track those files down. So you could use this to do more deep dive searches, for their investigations into users. So if there is a user that ha has issues or there's a problem or something like that going on, you can use this to go ahead and investigate further. So for example, I might say, hey, I'm concerned that there might be some audio video files that exist out there. Now this would be a pretty broad search here, but I could go ahead and narrow that down potentially if I've got specific users in mind or things of that nature there. And then with any of these users, I'm able to quickly click into it, see what's going on. I could go ahead and take some different actions on that, including breaking the file share if I need to, if the file's being shared in different ways. I'm able to quickly click in and, and see some basic information as well too. So here I can see that there's three people that this files has been shared to. So very easy to go ahead and kind of quickly take an investigation a little bit further, figure out does the user have something that we weren't aware of, or maybe that's that's not something that we were able to quickly easily find here. So that's going to be a very powerful feature there with the live file search. And then the Drive Files tab itself has some very powerful features with looking into the user's folder structure, as well as just the more uh, recently modified and have and files that have had their share permissions changed there. The next major feature is going to be over in the Gmail tab and the live email search. So this search works a lot like it does over on the Drive Files tab, again, designed to do a live API call, go out and track down specific emails that meet your search criteria. Now, this one does require a little bit more of a receive date, potentially, unless you input other parameters there. But again, this can go back very far. As long as the email in this case exists, this should be able to go ahead and track that email down, or as long as the account is still active here. So with this, I could go ahead and change this. I could go ahead and set a broader time frame if I wanted to. And then there's a lot of different parameters you can use here, anything from sender to recipients to subject line, even to specific mailboxes. So if I'm concerned that there maybe is one specific person here who I need to do a little bit of a further investigation into, I'm able to go ahead and quickly take a look at those emails, see what's going on with the, uh, with the particular user in question and take actions as needed here as well too. So once the emails are pulled up, we're able to quickly see those different emails that the user has here. We can quickly go through, we've got options to go ahead and download those emails, uh, pull them down as local copies to take a look at. I could also go ahead and outright delete emails. So I could delete it from everyone's inbox, or I could go ahead and just delete it from the specific user if I wanted to. I can also do a mass selection to quickly delete multiple emails out of the environment. I can change my number of rows here up to 100 per page. So there's some really easy ways to go ahead and do more mass deletion as well too. It's a really great tool in those situations where someone sends an email domain wide, or there's an email coming in from the outside, or there's just in needed investigation to go ahead and dive into an individual user's Gmail and see what's going on there. So those are going to be the major features here and some of the different some of the different feature functionalities. Again, there's a lot more within the Cloud Monitor product, but those are three very powerful components that exist within the Cloud Monitor product that can be really useful in some of those further investigations or taking actions on some of those different areas, such as concerns potentially about people sharing things that they shouldn't be that might contain social security numbers or credit card numbers, or it might be a situation where there's some potential compromised accounts or things like that. The Cloud Monitor tool can give you some really easy ways to go ahead and further dig into that and take action there as well. Next, we'll move over to Content Filter, which is an extension cloud-based web filtering platform designed to go where your students need to access internet for schoolwork, whether or not they're on your network. The content filter extension will work for Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge. It does require the user to be signed in to their Google Chrome profile or signed in over on the Edge side. Uh, it's deployed via the Google Workspace or via Microsoft Intune there. But the filter, very easy to get installed, very easy to get up and running for, for both environments. And then once the filter is deployed, it'll, it'll be able to go ahead and get things up and running very quickly, very seamless, very easy to go ahead and get things configured if there's quick allow lists, block lists there. Um, on the Google side, things are going to be set based on organizational unit. So very easy to get some of those things quickly inputted uh, up and running there on the filtering side. One of the core parts of the filter is this risk section. And what we're talking about on the risk side of things here primarily are two risks out of the box. One what looking for potential indications of self-harm and another looking for toxicity, which is more inappropriate, violent language, things like that. Uh, both of these are machine learning models. So they're trying to look at the sentiment and context of things. And they're specifically in here looking for inputs. So when somebody goes to a website and they 
enter something in and press enter, or if they're say in maybe Gmail or something like that, and they're creating maybe an email draft like that, and they're uh, pressing enter, those are things that the platform is going to go ahead and pick up on. So if there are concerning inputs or things like that, those are things that will get, get detected. You can choose where you want to set these risks as well. They can be set at the root level at the domain there, or they can be set on various OUs. Probably in most cases, you'd be setting that on, a, on different student OUs and things like that. You can also generate your own custom risks as well, too. This is a very powerful feature. So if there's certain language you're concerned about that students might be using, or there's slang or things like that, you can go ahead and implement those in here as well, too. The platform supports both keyword-based as well as regex-based risk scans. Last thing too, there's also notifications. So if I go ahead and click into one of these risks here, I can go ahead and configure specific notifications for this. I can choose when those notifications are going to go out. If I want rapid notifications, very easy to go ahead and do that. I can choose who these notifications are going to be going to. And I can choose if I want to have them go out on a specific alert period time frame or at a, a specific day each time. So lots of ways to go ahead and get that set up. I can also choose which days of the week I'm going to be receiving those notifications. And this is just for the self-harm risk, but I could also go ahead and configure notifications for all the risks as well, too. So there's definitely some flexibility with those notifications, making sure that the right people receive information if there is some kind of concern, if there is some kind of potential problem happening there. When something has been flagged as a what we call a violation here, it would be listed here in the violations section. So if we scroll down here, we might see a few of those in here. And really easy ways to see those, those will be listed as either inputs or searches primarily. So in this case here, we've got a couple of different inputs in here. We can see right away what the text was that was put in. I can click into this to see how what it was flagged as and how high the confidence score was. If I wanted to view this, this would take me into that individual user's account to get some further context of what else they were browsing and looking at when this particular input was detected. And then I can see what else they've been doing here. There's another input from the same user. It'll be very similar with searches as well, too. So we can see here this user went into went into Google search here and, and typed some things in that would be pretty concerning to see there. So again, similar idea there on, on that end. So that'll be one of the core components is that risk section. And then we have some standard things as well, too, of block lists, allow lists. The platform also has a very powerful search term blocking. So if there are specific search terms you want to have the users block, very easy to go ahead and get that set up as well. We also do look at the device side of things there. As, it, as in its extension base, it's not going to be a mobile device management solution, but there are some powerful features listed in here. So here we'll see some basic information like a device ID. That device ID, if it's a Chromebook, is going to be referenceable back to what you have in the Google Admin Console. But over here on the right-hand side, there's some ability to see some more details. There's an ability to report devices lost or stolen, which is going to go ahead and lock down the browser. So it would either lock down the Chrome browser or the Microsoft Edge browser for you there. So very handy that way. There is also then a location tracking feature. This will only track for 24 hours, but designed to help you locate those lost devices. So maybe a student says, hey, I put a device somewhere and I don't exactly remember where it is. Well, if it's still connected to the internet and someone, someone finds it, someone opens it, you can use the start tracking feature to get some, some idea where that device might be located there as well too. But again, that only works for a 24 hour time frame, so more limited to, to that time frame there. So. And then if you do click into the device information here, uh, you're able to see some ad additional details on what's going on here as well, too. In this case, you're pretty quiet on, on this particular account here. We can also see, though, there's a last track location as well. So we could view that on a map. If I went ahead and viewed that on the map, it would give me exactly where that was located as well, too. And if there's multiple people logged into a device, it would also list that in here as well, too. So you can see it says logged in accounts here. So really handy if someone else might be using somebody's Chromebook or something of that nature there. And you get a list of all the users and when those users were accessing the device itself. So handy with some of that management of things, keeping an eye on, on some of the things on the device side as well, too. So. So those will be some of the core features of the Content Filter product there. And then directly integrated into the Content Filter product will be a Classroom Manager product. The newest addition to our suite of tools is Classroom Manager. It's an optional add-on to Content Filter to give teachers more flexibility during instruction while maintaining safety and compliance standards. So to start off with, we're on the Classes tab here. There's also a Scenes tab. Uh, scenes are pre-built things that can be configured during an actual session uh, of a class. So right now here, you can see that I'm the teacher in question. If I go over here, I can see some of the different classrooms I've got turned on. I can see how many are available. I can see how many students are in those classrooms. I can modify those classrooms as needed. I can review the uh, audit log of those classrooms. I could also remove the classroom. And I can also then start a session as well, too. It's going to default to an hour time frame. I can give this session a name. Once I start the session, it's going to go ahead and show the two students here. Now the students do need to go ahead and join the classroom there. 
and then once they've joined the classroom here, I'm going to be able to go ahead and see their screen. And this is going to be a screen share all the way down to the to the desktop itself there. I can click into that and take a look at the screen. So if they have anything open, I'm able to review that as well. Uh, in this case, the student doesn't have anything open quite yet. But if I go in here and I start clicking around and opening different tabs and things, we'll start seeing that reflected here. We can also start seeing that reflected over in the tab side of things here as well too. So if I go ahead and take a look at the different users here, I can see one of my users hasn't joined yet. So if they were someone who's maybe absent today or something like that, I could delete them just for this particular session. Here at the top, I can quickly see who, ha who has joined the session, who has not joined the session. I can create subsessions of users if I have specific monitoring requirements for different, different users as well. There's some icons here to go ahead and change the view I'm looking at. I can also remove people. I can pin people here. And then on the right-hand side, the way the Classroom Manager works is that it's going to go ahead and have a session duration. And after that session duration ends, the student will be kicked out of the classroom. The session will end. So any of, any of the, the locks or uh, blocks or anything like that that have been applied, uh, that's all going to go ahead and disappear after that point there. If I go into summary here, I'm able to see some just basic information about what's going on with the classroom here as a whole. So I can see there's some participants. I can see there's some unique sites. I can see what my top site is. And then below that, there's a scene section here. This is some of the pre-built controls. So I can either add in an existing scene or I can modify this scene, this session default scene. So I can allow certain sites, I can block certain sites. And that allow also allows you to allow through sites that may be normally blocked, but might be something that you need for that particular class period there. There is also then a policy section here, which allows me to enable something called focus mode. What focus mode does is it's going to go ahead and close all the tabs that are not explicitly allowed. So if they try to open things, try to go to things that they shouldn't be, it's going to go ahead and lock those down here. So we can see a little tool tip here as well too. So it's a way to go ahead and kind of lock some things down there and not allow them to leave the specific sites in question. If I did create some kind of scene, I can also then go ahead and share that to other people who might be in my org as well too. When a scene is applied here, so I'm going to go ahead and grab an existing scene here. If I go ahead and add that to the session here and it says success, I can go ahead and close out of that. And then suddenly you'll notice here that this has changed and now I'm looking at something else here instead because I've gone ahead and enabled that focus mode. So if the student does try to access any other sites or anything like that, it's going to go ahead and prevent them from doing so. Bottom here, I can also go ahead and open up an individual tabs. Now I would need to turn the focus mode off in this case here, so I'm going to go ahead and do so. But then I could go ahead and open up a simple tab And it'll go ahead and open that for the user as well too and set that as the active tab so way to push those tabs out as well and then there is also a one-way chat functionality as well or really more of an announcement functionality so if i go ahead and type in something here and i go ahead and scroll back up you can see that reflected in here directly as well too once the session has concluded and things are done you can press the end session button here this will just take a moment here, and then the session ends and the student is released back to normal filtering. So the idea here is to give teachers a quick, uh, easy way to go ahead and again manage those classrooms and go ahead and have a little bit more control during the day-to-day -day on classes. Lastly here, there is also a scene section. This is where you can pre-build those scenes ahead of time so that the scenes are ready to go. Just turn them on during the class session and no, no issue there on that end. This is just scratching the surface of what you can do with managed methods. I encourage you to schedule a demo or claim your free audit today to see how we can help you save time and effort while improving your district cybersecurity, safety, and compliance.